You want me to put a you want me to put a little welcome? No, that's text? okay. Uh, you can. I just I just actually went live right now, uh, so everybody can kind of see your screen and our cameras and stuff. Hey guys, it's uh, Jason here. I know uh, I know we started the broadcast a little early, but uh, Greg and I just wanted to kind of say hi to everybody and uh, just let you know uh, this is going to be a fun webinar. I've got um, uh, Greg here with me, of course. I'll be watching the question box in case we have questions. Uh, when we're doing the HDR on this JVC. So hello, everybody. I hope you are well and safe and uh, staying busy and all those fun things. Looks like there's actually somebody already in the question marks. Oh, Sylvan says, hello, Jason. Hello, Greg. Hey, Sylvan. How are you? Bonjour. Can you hear me? You should be able to. I can okay. hear you. It is very late for you. Yeah, I was about to say for the guys in, in Europe, it's probably very, very late, right? What time is it there, Sylvan? Uh, two. Ooh, yeah. Adam, shut the door there, please. Yep, two, two in the morning, yep. Well, that's good, guys. I hope everybody's uh, finding some good productive ways to pass the time. I've talked to a lot of calibrators uh, over the past couple of weeks, and there's a few guys that are unfortunately just kind of, you know, dead in the water. They can't do anything. So I hope you guys uh, are, are able to do do something fun to, to pass the time. I've been playing a lot with that JVC projector at uh, at my house, especially with that 235 screen. That has been really fun. I wasn't, you know, I've done plenty of those systems, but I've never lived with it before. It's just so different once you live with it. But I tell you what, too, Greg, that the uh, the lens memory, I love that so much. Just pushing a button and fills up yeah, the once I went, cool. once I went from uh, uh, sixteen by nine to two point three nine, I was just kicking myself, like, why didn't I do that a decade ago? Why did I do this for? I know, I know, it's the same feeling. That's funny. That's good. Has uh, anybody who's listening in, has anybody worked on anything super cool lately? Any real crazy systems or super high-end projectors or anything like that? I did, a, Greg, I did three Christies at a church in South Florida a little while ago, um, mainly just matching them, really, but that was fun. We had to break out the scissor lift, and you know these screens were massive. It was like a 3,000 person uh, auditorium. It was a huge place. That was a really fun project. Cool. They had, this, they had the three big projectors out on stage and then behind the stage, they had a control room with uh, with six like 55 inch um, Samsung consumer panels that they were using for just monitoring. So I calibrated all those and then calibrated the three projectors out front. And it was a it was about a two, two and a half day project. It was It was a lot of fun. It was right around. Yeah, they were getting ready for a Christmas uh, play or something. So yeah, it was. It must have been right before. Must have been early December. Or so, but other than that, um, man, I'm just getting tons and tons of requests lately. For um, I, I swear, it's like every email I get is LG OLED. Hey, I got a new LG OLED. Hey, I got a new C9. Hey, you know, I've been getting that so much lately. The prices are. Just so the, do I buy the Sony A eight nine A or do I buy the LG? Yeah. Which one? Uh, yeah, yep, I'm getting that the same exact questions. And I saw that the um, the new one, the CXs, I've seen that those have been hitting uh, hitting the stores. Uh, I know Best Buy has already got some pricing, and um, I think they're shipping to a few few people. I'm really curious to see that 50 inch. Yeah, that might 50, be a cool. Little... 50 inch, 48, isn't it? 48 inch. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. yep. That might be a cool little panel. And you know, if they could get that thing at like. Nine ninety nine or something? That'd be sweet. Yeah, I heard someone's. I don't remember exactly, but I heard someone saying that um, the uh, it wasn't really attractively priced. And I, I don't know. That's just kind of in. That's kind of kind of. Um, you know, I, I didn't look at the pricing or the, the full thread, but that was on on one of the websites. Yeah. That were, well, the that's uh, what manufacturer price, and you know how that always works. Uh, I think it's thirteen ninety nine or something. So retail might be. 10.99, 11.99, and then of course 
you know, six months from now, it'll be nine ninety nine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and it, it, to be really good, it'd be the nine ninety nine. I mean, I was. Yeah. I, I purchased three or four of the fifty five inches mm-hmm. last July August for nine twenty five. Oh, there you go. So on. Um, in fact, that's why I sold uh, AV Pro a couple at at, at CD. I, I used them in my oh, class. Nice. Oh, cool. Uh, Tony O'Brien just popped in and says, good morning. Good morning, Tony. Glad to have you. Who's uh, that? Uh, Tony O'Brien. Okay. I don't know, Tony. You know. I, is, there, is there any way for me to see the list here? It, it just tells me there's 24 attendees, but that's it. Um, the only way to for you to see the list, Greg, I think is if I make you the organizer. So let me see if I can do that real quick. Is that, is that going to mess up your um, control? Tony just said he's from Australia. Hey, Tony. Yeah. And I've only been over there once. I went last July to um, Sydney. We did a class over in Sydney. All right. And by the way, what a city, man. Oh, my goodness. I cannot wait to go back, spend like an extra week if I can, because that was a really, really great city. I almost tried kangaroo. It was on the dinner menu one night, and I, I wussed out at the last minute. You're on the camera, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Tony says he's in South Australia uh, in the wine tasting area. So I am already, uh, already very, uh, very envious of you, Tony. That's that sounds like a great place to be. Uh, Leslie Shum says hi, Greg. Hey, Leslie, how are you? And uh, Ladislav says he's from the Czech Republic. So yeah, we've got folks from all over the place here. This is great. Yeah. Leslie says good. You. I I am doing well. I am awesome. uh, yeah. I think I think uh, Leslie, if I remember right, has a JVC in his showroom. Is that correct, Leslie? Do I remember that right? Oh, did he respond? Uh, RS three thousand. There you go. Okay. Nice piece. Real nice piece. Uh, Chris says that the LG CX forty eight will be priced at uh, fifteen hundred in the UK. Yes, so yeah, that's kind of what we're hearing too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but that's fifteen hundred pounds, so that'd be, right. you know, that's eight, eighteen, nineteen hundred. Yeah. Yes. But um, things are always well, and that's probably in, includes the VAT also. We should take uh, that right off the bill here. Greg, you also have another hello from uh, David Von Cannon. Hey, David. Good, good. Elvin from uh, the Dominican Republic says hi. Hey, dude. That's a that's got to be a great spot too. I'd I'd love to go down there. Guys, we'll get uh, we'll get rolling here. Uh, we'll let a few more people get signed on. We're about three minutes from our official start time. Again, we just wanted to kind of pop on early and say hi to everybody. So yeah, in the next three or four minutes or so, we will uh, we'll get rolling. Larry says hello, Greg. Uh, I don't want to butcher his name. L I G O N last name. Oh, Ligon. Yeah, Larry. Ligon, yeah. Yeah. Cool, Larry. Yeah, Larry says hi. Hey, Larry. It would be nice to see the see the names here. The only thing that I'm worried about is that if we start switching stuff now, we might <laughs> we might lose. <laughs> you know, I don't want to break anything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll keep you posted. Like I said, if anybody uh, anybody else says hi, Adam Pels. Hey, Adam, how you doing? Well, so I, I can, I'm not even seeing chats then on this on the, on my feed. Is there a little uh, arrow that you can drop down to open up the individual little categories? I've got like sharing, webcam, audio, dashboard, attendees, polls, handouts, chat. You have all those or not? Yeah, but my, my chat just says to organizers and panelists. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I would have to make you an organizer for you to see all that stuff. Yeah. It's only to them. Cool, guys. We'll get started here in about another minute or so. Yeah, now it's nice and dark there, Greg, at your place. Yeah, the sun just hits, just drops right around uh, 745 right now. Cool. Matt, can you turn the camera just another little bit there? 
Greg Larry says he loves the GVC projector and he loves your disc for setting black and white level. Well, thank you, Larry. Away, away your center. I just turn it towards the center. Just, I just, just start to turn loose a little bit. That's good right there, even. That's not very much, but that's okay. We can see it on the screen. Yeah, I guess it's center of the screen. It's probably best. Okay, Greg. Uh, let's. Uh, let's about thirty seconds. Okay. Sure. Break it up an hour, for just like two minutes. I'm sorry. Can you say that again? But break it about at about one hour. Yeah, we'll see where we're at. Yeah, we'll see where we're at from there. All right. Okay, ten seconds. Click. <laughs> Take one. Hey everybody, Jason here from Meridio, and tonight's session is gonna be very exciting. You can probably see our special guest on the screen already. That is Greg Lowen from the Professional Video Association, Professional Video Alliance, correct? Yes, that is correct, Professional Video Alliance, a PVA. Video, PVA, so thank you so much, Greg, for being here. Uh, this session tonight is actually a follow-up to a previous session that I did on my own. Uh, we did a JVC projector, an RS600. I calibrated it in SDR. And uh, during that session, you know, it, it was running a little late and we just didn't have time to get to the HDR. So we thought this would be a great opportunity to get Greg involved and to look at some of the uh, HDR settings and the HDR calibration when it comes to this JVC. Um, Greg just happened to have the exact same projector that I was working on uh, during the last session and that is an RS600. Uh, so without further ado, Greg, why don't you maybe introduce yourself and tell the folks a little bit about yourself. There may be some people on here who are, who've never met you before. Great. Well, hey, thanks for having me on, Jason. Absolutely. Um, so I am I am the founder of the Professional Video Alliance, who have been around just over two years now. And we're an organization that brings uh, the Polish production and uh, the performance home theater industries together to talk about video standards and video calibration. Um, in my 20 years of doing this now, I have found that even though we're in different industries, um, whether we're in performance home theater or, or home theater, we have the same standards and the same desire to make images accurate, just like the post-production community does. And in, in post-production, it's not a it's not a desire, it's a requirement. So, you know, the post-production guys are really anal and, and really desirous of you know to get things to that standard. And then and, and we're on the side, it's like, okay, it looks not bad, whatever. But we, you know, on the performance home theater side, we, we definitely want exactly the same thing. So I, I brought together that alliance group, um, and uh, we have about 150 calibrators worldwide right now. We do trainings. We have manufacturers on board that that are that are PVA manufacturer um, alliance members to help uh, talk about standards and uh, and putting forth standards and enforcing the standards and preaching the standards. That's excellent, Greg. Excellent. So thanks for the introduction. Uh, and just as we're going along here, guys, just to let you know too. Uh, I'll be fielding questions, so feel free to type in any questions you might have in the question box. And uh, as we're going through the uh, the HDR calibration here, uh, feel free to ask any questions that are uh, scratching your brain. And uh, between myself and Greg, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to answer them. So feel free to to do that. Uh, ask as many questions as you'd like. Uh, Greg, why don't you let the folks know real quick, just sort of uh, what you got going up here uh, for the setup. So what you guys are seeing right now. Um, Greg's got a webcam uh, firing at his screen, so you can see the JVC menu. Uh, you can also see his screen because we're going to be looking at Calman and the JVC software. Uh, if you guys are looking at your screen right now, there is a slider bar. So if you grab that slider bar and move it up and down, you can change the size of Greg's screen as you see it. So if you want to make Greg's screen real big and make the webcams real small, you can certainly do that. Uh, whatever helps you guys uh, or makes you the most comfortable as you're going through the presentation here. Uh, so, Greg, I think um, uh, we talked a little bit earlier. Uh, what what are you using here for light meters, and and what's going on with your setup? Um, so, I have uh, I'm using a, a Jetty uh, 1511 for a spectral radiometer, and I'm using a Klein K10A for a tri stimulus meter. Great. And, and I've uh, I've paired them together in a, in a process called profiling to take the accuracy of the spectral radiometer and apply that to the measurements on the Klein to give me about 30 times the speed of the jetty by itself and better low light sensitivity. Absolutely, great, great. And which generator are you using today? I am using a Meridio 6G. Yes, boom, I love to, I love to hear that, that's great. You were, a, you were a very early adopter of that generator. I, 
you may have been, um, before I even worked for AV Pro, you may have been on the beta test when I was, if I remember correctly. Where, where, did you get an early early prototype of that one? Um, I got them right at the ISC rollout. Right, so you got it what, right at four, launch. Five yeah. years ago now, maybe? Yeah, yeah, and that, that piece has always done great for us. Uh, it's it's still, for the price point, very, very tough to beat. I mean, I can't think of really any any out there that can do what it can do for the money. Uh, and uh, I, I love seeing it, it. At, at the price point. It's it's it's, it's it, it does everything beat. you need it to. Plus, you know, Dolby yeah. Vision HDR10. Mm -hmm. uh, and all I, the different I, resolutions. I see it out in the wild a lot too. I see it in other YouTube videos. You know, uh, people who are not even doing calibration sometimes are using it uh, to, to troubleshoot HDMI. So, uh, yeah, great, great little generator. We're we're happy that you're uh, you're using it, and I know you use it in classes and things. And again, we're happy to have you on. And um, yeah, so let's let's kind of get rolling here. Let's uh let's kind of start off with now and your particular projector. Obviously, this is different projector, different room, uh, but same model number. And I think you'd mentioned to me before we started here that you've already done the SDR on this one, correct? Yeah, I was just <clears throat> kind of jump over here some of my SDR stuff. Um, this is maybe a little bit of a, of a different workflow than what other people are are are, are used to. Um, if you're if you're a PVA calibrator, gone through PVA training, we have a PVA specific workflow. Nice. Uh, which which is what I'm going through here. It's just, it's just a little bit more. Uh, it, no, it's only it's only like eight screens, so it's it's pretty pretty simplex, but it gets gets everything you need to do. So Good. the SDR calibration, I'm setting to gamma 2.4 and rec 709 with D65 white point. Great. And your uh, your basement, it seems uh, based on your webcam at least, that it's pretty dark down there. Um, yeah, I, I had a I had a flood a couple years ago, so we redid everything. I have a dark gray walls, um, black ceiling tile for the majority of the basement. Um, Great. It, it's, it's you know it's it could be better, but it's still it's still kind of a multi-purpose room, so it's not sure. it's not a dedicated theater. Good. And if you guys remember from the SDR that we did uh, on my RS six hundred. Um, I went with a gamma of 2.2 because I'm not in a super dark cave like Greg is. Uh, I'm in a, I'm in a living room that does have some ambient light in there. At nighttime, it's nice and dark, but um, you know I still have white walls and things because it's a living room. Uh, so Greg's in a nice dark cave, which is why he did 2.4. And um, you know that's one great thing about uh, these projectors and, and flat panels for that matter. Regardless of any kind of room lighting you're in, there's plenty of gamma adjustments on the on the latest displays. I remember Greg. Uh, I started calibrating in 07 or 08, and back then uh, there were displays that didn't even have a gamma adjustment. It was just like, you know, it was based on the picture mode, and if it wasn't what you wanted, oh well. <laughs> but the displays now are so much, so much more advanced. Things have changed a lot. Um, it, so with the PVA, we're, we're actually recommending uh, a 2.4 in a light-controlled room and 2.2 in an ambient room or even, mm -hmm. or even television broadcast. Absolutely. Yep, good call. Great call. And then, and and we're, and we're still talking about right around. Uh, well, right, right now, I, I'm I'm set up for uh, 80 Candelas, 24 foot Lamberts, and I'm a little bit on the bright side of that. Um, you know, the specification is still 16 foot Lamberts for a projector, right? Which is a, which is at 48 nits. Good, good. So, um, what picture mode did you uh, calibrate for SDR? Did you do um, one of the custom modes, or what'd you end up going with? Um, so I have, I still have the modes right on the screen. You can see. Um, I went with uh, picture mode. That's one of the user one, mm -hmm. and then I, re I renamed it reference. I'm on Great. low lamp power. Ap the aperture is on manual. I'm going to put that to auto two, and uh, and then then a color profile is is custom four, and then uh, then I've tweaked the the 6500 Kelvin white white balance for Great. color temperature. Now on That's the on on the uh, on the JVC, uh, when you go to do HDR, uh, is there a dedicated mode for HDR, or do you still pick a user mode? Um, you can pick a user mode. The the problem with HDR on this year model is it defaults to like when when it gets an HDR 10 signal, it jumps to gamma D. Right. Yep. Um, which is inherently not it's not the best choice. Um, what what happened with with JVC and and Pretty much every other manufacturer, they were coming out with HD uh, HDR product before we actually had HDR sources. Right. Um, and and that 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 first six months, eight months of product, there was a lot of firmware updates and products that didn't really work that fantastic. And this is one of those products. 
um, by, by the next generation, um, so this is the RS600 by this, the 620, they had all those issues fixed, but this is one of the issues they had on this one was it, it locks to gamma D for HDR and gamma D is just too dim. Got it. Got it. And I can show that to you here, but I'm just going to jump, jump through here on, uh, so this is my, this is my SDR gamma 2.4 white balance settings, averaging 1.4 for an error. If you can see that. Good. Yep. Yeah, good numbers. Yep. And uh, and then I'm when when I do CMS adjustments, I, I select 75% of Rec 709 and I target those points. Yep. That's a that's a great method. I've and I've seen that a lot in um I I see that a lot in uh, flat panels that have problems with the color gamut. If you try to calibrate color at 100% saturation and that panel can't do 100% of that color, you end up just kind of chasing your tail and getting frustrated. So uh, that's a great tip for you guys. If you're having problems with CMS, uh, knock it down to 75% of the saturation and usually things dial in much better. And plus too, I'm, I'm sure Greg, you would agree with me on this. Uh, there's way more content in the middle than there is on the peaks anyway. So, you know, set, getting 75 and 50%, 25% saturation down means 100% saturation might be a little off. Sometimes that's worth the trade off. Yeah. Um, and that's actually, this is the, the PVA methodology is, 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 targeting 75, 75 all the time. And, and this is important when you're going into HDR and when you're trying to target DCI or, or Rec 2020, we can't get to Rec 2020. So right. if, if you try to even do 75% of Rec 2020, you're gonna have errors. So, but, so if you take this methodology, we're gonna go one step beyond that when we do the HDR part of the calibration and, uh, and show you how to target CMS a little bit better. Cool, uh, Chris is back. Chris, hey, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, he's got a comment. He says, uh, he still thinks they should have done another firmware update on this model uh, that offered HDR curves. And uh, it looks like they did Chris that. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Chris. Shout out to Chris. Hey, Chris, thank you for coming. And for everybody, uh, Chris Deering is a, is a calibrator consultant out of the Seattle area. And he actually uh, brought me into, uh, into the fold on actually doing some of these HDR calibrations on the JVC. So special thank you to Chris. Yeah, great. And uh, Chris just said, hi, Greg. So that's great. Uh, Tony has a question. Um, he says, uh, Chris says, make me proud. <laughs> uh, Tony has a question. He says, he missed the SDR session. Can I ask what you did with the custom gamma curve? Sorry for all the questions. That's okay. Uh, that's okay, Tony. Um, on that particular SDR session, I didn't do any custom gamma curves on that particular one. Uh, the, the, I can't remember which gamma I used, but it was actually tracking really, really well. So I didn't do any customs on that one. And I think he had, an, I think somebody else had another question up here too. Oh, uh, Tony says, um, oh, I think he's talking about your SDR, Greg. He asked the brightness setting uh, being at 10. Uh, was that just based on test patterns? Is that how you came up with 10? Yeah, that's based on, uh, that's based on Pluge patterns. Great, there you go, perfect, perfect, perfect. Cool. All right, great. So, uh, yeah, what uh, what do you what do you want to look at next? Do you want to uh, take a look at any more SDR stuff, or do you want to jump straight into the HDR? No, that's it. So that that that's my final SDR calibration. If I had used the JVC software, I could have gotten my my white balance and my grayscale to track a little bit better. But um, I'm pretty you know I'm pretty happy with this overall though. Yeah, the color checker looks pretty darn good. Yeah, I like it. I like it. So, uh, Greg, why don't you um uh, I'll, I'll kind of shut my mouth here and look at the question box and just sort of walk everybody through kind of what you're doing and uh, I'll field the questions and yeah, let's have some fun. That's good. Okay. So let's, let's, let's jump into HDR. So I have, when it, whenever you're doing an HDR calibration, some displays more than others, but I, I always do a base SDR calibration first because sometimes like on the Sony's as an example, Everything on a, everything on a Sony for Dolby Vision and HDR10 is based on SDR. So do an SDR calibration first. Make sure the display is working correctly, or in this case, the projector, and then go into HDR. So that's what we've done right now, or that's what we've done in part one of, of this class or this this presentation. Great. So I'm going to show you that. So we actually have on on the screen right now um, the settings for um, the SDR calibration, but I am going to just turn on HDR and you're gonna see what happens to the projector. And of course the JVC takes about, about 15 seconds to do a handshake, so. Yeah, I noticed that on mine too. It, it kind of, uh, 
for a but second. Like, did something break? Did something break? And then it, it, then it locked in. It didn't get used to it over over some time. So you can see that is, um, I don't know how much of the, yeah, you can see a little bit of the image there. It's just, this is the uh, the Indian lady in the market off the Meridio generator. Yeah, great pattern, great image rather. It's an HDR pattern, but it's just way too dim on the, on this projector the way it is. So you notice here, it's it's still in the reference mode. <clears throat> Excuse me, but that's um, the reference mode. I, I had set that up for, I was shooting at 70 nits, I believe was what we had it set for, which is too dim and at the same time, you see it defaults to gamma D. Right. Okay, and and if you go to the um, the JVC website, they came up with some specific settings saying, okay, in gamma, in gamma D, turn up the picture tone, turn up the dark level, and it makes it more watchable, which it does help, but it doesn't help enough without doing what's called custom gammas. So we're gonna talk a little bit about custom gammas and specifically, well, talk about projector calibration in general and talk a little bit about custom gammas specifically for this projector. Um, custom gammas aren't as much of a big deal now on the last two generations of JVC. JVC's done a much better job of it. It's, it doesn't need it. It doesn't need it anymore. But in this particular model, it did. Um, it's the only way to me it, it made it watchable. Um, so, so just being said about that. So anyway, so again, we're, so we're in custom D, and, and and that's the problem. Whenever this projector goes into HDR, it goes to gamma D as a default. So I'm gonna go now to, um, I'm gonna open the HDR calibration workflow for CalMAN. Okay, so what do we know about HDR? Okay, HDR is a, is a flat panel format. Uh, there is no such thing in post-production doing HDR on projectors. Um, HDR, they're mastered on two different monitors mainly. One is one is the the Sony the the, uh, the X300 which is now being replaced with the X310 that does a, that does HDR10 and that does 1,000 nits. The other the other monitor that's out there is Adobe Vision monitor which does 4,000 nits. They're both 31 inches in size. That's what post production reference work is being mastered at for HDR, and it's either 1,000 nits or 4,000 nits. In post production, they are not doing any mastering or color correction or color timing on projectors. Um, so this, what we're doing right now is is, is, is using an application or a D or Blu-ray or whatever source you're looking at, talking about putting it, applying it to a something that's not close to 1000 nits. Now right. in SDR, we have your typical, you take your LG OLED, okay, that gets to 650, 700 nits. So then we have roll off. So that's what's the difference between the, the HDR mastery monitor and the LG OLED monitor is we don't have the as much as, as quite as much light output, so we have this thing called tone mapping and roll off. Um, but the problem with the projector is we're only at one quarter, one fifth the light output of an OLED, so we we don't we don't have any. There's no reference point for HDR. So what we're doing is we're trying to create a reference point for HDR that somewhat matches or mimics what we're seeing in post-production and the reference monitors. Then we could do what the process of calibration, which is what, you know, calibration is to make it look like the master monitor. Is that making sense, Jason? Absolutely, nailed it, okay. perfect, love it. Um, um, so, so that's where we're kind of coming from. So we have a projector that doesn't have a lot of light output. So let's, so right off the bat, I'm opening up my software. My target is a D D65 Rec 2020. We're gonna talk about it later. So the first thing is we're an EOTF 2084. So 2084, which is called the PQ or the EOTF, it's 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 a new way of saying gamma, but gamma is a relative term. HDR, the PQ is absolute. Every code value, every step from zero to 100% uh, white ha should have a certain luminance value. It doesn't vary by product. So so when you're at 50% stimulus on any calibrated monitor in HDR, you should have the same amount of light output, whether it's on an LG, whether it's on a Sony, LED, whatever, okay? But the pre again, with the projectors, we, we're, we're talking of something that might only have one-tenth light output of a reference display, so we have to fudge with this number. So we're gonna talk about ways of fudging with this number for the rest of the class. So first thing, we're gonna jump over here and uh, go into a pre two pre-screens. I can do, well, let's just go ahead. Let's just, let's just do here. 
So I'm doing, doing a pre-calibration capture. This may or may not be pretty good. I've been playing with this projector for a while, but we'll, we'll definitely get the idea here. Hey, Greg, if you can real quick, um, can you ex can you make that Calman screen as big as possible, uh, the, the, the box next to the X button to close the window? Um, I, I have to close. I guess I can do that. Yeah, let me just shut that down. My dock. I have this. Well, let me see. OK, if, it, see. if it's a pain, don't worry about it. No, no, I got it right pain. here. I can close that down. I'm going to close that off. And how's that? Boom. Par oh, great. Now it's filling up the screen all the way. That's excellent. OK, I'm just going to drop that down this this. Uh, Okay, well, hopefully that'll work. Okay, good. So let's go ahead here. So let's go ahead and do a quick pre-calibration measurements. So I've done some tweaking here. Okay. And you see, this isn't even close to, I mean, this isn't close. Well, right now, that's a, that that's an SDR gamma signal. Um, we got to turn on uh, HDR here, and it's going to have to resync again. Then we'll redo it again. Tony, to kind of piggyback on your question earlier about the SDR session, um, it, it's up on YouTube. If you go to the Meridio YouTube page. Uh, and uh, it's one of the last ones that we posted. It's it should be uh, right there on the on the front page there. So uh, feel free, guys, if you didn't catch the SDR session and you want to check it out, um, it is up on the YouTube. Um, and that being said, also Jason, I am uh, this JVC projector I got in my room. Now mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing a calibration session on that in the next two weeks. Oh great! So if, if you want to do that with AV Pro, we can hook on together so we can do a full full calibration with a with an with a with an RS2000. Oh yeah, there you go. I know a lot of folks, uh, I got some feedback from that last webinar and a lot of folks were like, hey, what about one of the new models? And I just don't have access to one right now. So that might be uh, that might be uh, something we could do, Greg. That's a good idea. Okay, so I'm gonna jump to, uh, I'm just gonna jump to the HD. I, I have a preset I've already labeled HDR, so I'm gonna use that for HDR. Now, um, uh, Oh, go ahead. I was just say for, for anybody who, who's kind of new to the HDR part of this, uh, and I think you're about to do this anyway, let's talk about the graphs. Okay, yeah, yeah, good. So um, so what we have here, this is this is showing the E2F. This is this is this is like a gamma response, and this is this that doesn't matter on whatever what whatever product you have at at 50% luminance value. Or 50% stimulus, you should be at this far up, this far up the curve, and it should and it should have this amount of light output. Um, but the problem here is um, we have the software set for a thousand nits; it should go up to a thousand. Um, but it, it, we're only shooting at 123 lumens right now on that particular pattern. So that's so that that's the, so we're not we're not if, if this is the gamma line, all our values are measuring way too dark. But, but again, this, this this yellow line is meant for a flat panel. It's meant for an absolute value, like a, and it's it's meant like the Sony X300 reference monitors that can be that bright. But a projector is is, is well well below that. Um, I've seen some instances too on flat panels. If it's a if it's a maybe like a vivid mode for HDR, it'll do the opposite. Everything will track way too bright. Exactly. You can have it too bright, or you can have. I mean, it's just it's just like SDR. You can make the image too bright or too dim. Yeah. Totally. Um, but the problem, but the most problems with HDR is you can't get, you can't go all the way up here because it, uh, you know, it can't, it can't get bright enough overall. Right. Just flat uh, out, not so, enough horsepower. That's it. Yeah. So the other part of this here is we're just looking at CMS and the color gamut's uh, small right now. Um, so that's kind of where we're starting at. So we want to get our gamma response. You know, the image is too dim. We we want to get the great, the measured line onto the yellow line, which means our E2F is going to match, which, which would be like the gamma of 2.4 and SDR, except this is called EOTF and it's not SDR, it's HDR. So stay with me for a second. So um, so that's kind of pre-calibration. So the other problem here is we're only at 120, 100, 123 nits. So I'm going to do a couple things here on the menu system. Just going to recenter the, the brightness control. 
And then under HDR, I'm going to, um, okay, so I'm, I, it's, it's on lamp power high and uh, the aperture is all the way open. So, so that is as bright as this display can get right now. I'm just gonna do a quick reading here. So I'm actually shooting, I'm shooting 270 nits on this on this projector, which is really bright. And this is a, this this is a a screen innovation screen. It's it's 12 foot, 2.4 aspect ratio, and um, it went gained 1.3 screen innovations. Uh, so it's you know it, it has a, it has a, it has a positive gain. It's a little bit it's it's pretty bright screen, and you want all the light output you can for HDR because if your if your SDR is at 70 nits, which is what mine is, and that's all the horsepower you have, HDR because of 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 a total mapping and and leaving space for spectral or for for spectral highlights, the all of the regular content is going to be dimmer in HDR than SDR. So we want right. to have we always want to have headroom for HDR. Okay, so that so I have so I'm I'm shooting at um 200 I'm 270 nits. So it's going to measure that one second second time. Okay, so 270 nits. So that is my peak light output for SDR. So going back to the pre-screen now. That's why this is so under the target point for the ETUF. We're only we're only at 270 nits. We're not even close to this line. I mean, at, at this point, we should we should be at probably. Um, Right in there, here should be about 600 nits. So that's why we're that far off. So the numbers aren't going to look correct because we're not, we don't have the light output, but we want to have a, a similar look to a flat panel. It's just going to be dimmer. So how do we make a similar look to a flat panel? So let, let's take for an example a reference panel out there. And I'm just going to ask you out of the blue, Jason, well, what, what's it, what, what, what is a somewhat consumer reference panel that has tone mapping that you do a lot of? Uh, probably similar to like what's behind me, like an LG C8 or C9. Okay, so C8, C9, and what's the light output of a C8, C9? Um, a lot of them I've seen are in that 700 nit range. Okay, I, I'm gonna I, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna play with your number a little bit. I'm gonna say 600 nits, just because sure. in my head 600 works better. Okay? Yeah, no, that's okay. <laughs> okay, so if if I have a if I have a display that that's being used for reference content in the home environment. Um, and, and there's going to be some tone mapping on, going on. It's going to be six or 700 nits plus some tone mapping range, okay? Or in the tone in the tone mapping. So if I if I say I, I have 600 nits, and I and so if if I use that as my reference point, and I am and I am only shooting at uh, at 270 nits, I, I really want to multiply this number by at least two. If not three, you following me on that? So, I, so basically, every time I do a measurement here, I wish it, I, I wish it was three times brighter than this. Then it would look like an LG. Right. That makes sense, but I don't. But there's just no horsepower to do that. But I, I am taking that estimation that okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna magically add to this number. So how can we do that within Calman? So within Calman, if you go on, you go into little gear. You can go to environmental offsets, and there's a screen offset, and there's a large Y. Large Y stands for luminance. So I'm going to set it for two. So now when so now whenever I do a number, so instead of, of it saying 270, it's going to multiply that number by two. And it's going to be 539. So now the software is going to think that it's actually measuring the ETOF on target. So I'm making the projector as bright as I can. And then that's and 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 that's the that's the maximum light output I can. So all my numbers are going to be based on an ETOF of that value. Okay, so now let's go. So so now that I put that multiplier in, let's go ahead and do and, and do a full full series of measurements now. So you see how it's following the curve much better now. Way better. Okay, but the problem with this is it's still under the curve. It is still too dim, and that's because of this gamma D. So under under the under the picture control settings, this this is like a luminance slider on a, on an Epson projector. 
I think it's called um, HDR intensity. I'm not quite sure, but you can make the picture dimmer or brighter based on this. So I'm just going to go turn this down to minus five or minus seven, just so you can see what the difference is. It's minus eight right now. Okay. So I'm going to do exactly the same measurement with minus eight. You can just so you can see what you can do. And there's there's three on the JVC, right? Like high, you know, high range, mid range, low range. Right. Yeah, dark, I'm not quite sure. Well, one of them does the dark end. One of them does the bright end. I'm not sure if the other, yeah. the other one really does the middle or not. Um, but but you can see here. So I've turned the picture setting down, and it, and it's made the ETUF or the gamma much much dimmer, and it's much more linear line now too. Okay. So definitely the wrong way. So I want to go up. So the problem is you can go up. But, but you can't go up far enough. There's, there's not enough latitude on, on this. Now, the, it's, it's, it's uh, a little better on the 20s, and it's much, much better on the, on the, on the, 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 four, the 4K E-Shift models, and the new stuff from JVC is, is just wonderful. You don't need, you don't, um, you, there's enough control on that slider to, to, to get you where you need to go to. So this, uh, for this run, you cranked it up, right? Yeah. Great. There it goes. Yep. Okay. So that, so that's that's kind of where where you need to go. Now, I would probably like to be a little bit brighter than this again. So that's but then the problem is though, there's no more room in that slider. Okay. The, the, the slider, the, the picture tone, the, the the light output control is all the way up to 16, and you limit it to this gamma D. So Next thing is we can do customs. So with 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 a, with and, and this is where Chris Deering uh, came into being with with me and then bless your heart, Chris. Thank you so much for showing this to me about three years ago in Denver. It was awesome. Um, was actually how to create what's called RV curves or custom gamma curves on the JVC projectors. So you can actually use a third-party software to create new gamma curves. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. So under the gamma, so under under custom now, and then, then I can use the import function. And under import, I can put gamma curves in. And I've already done that. So with the gamma curve in, I'm gonna do I'm gonna redo this measurement again. And you see now it's even it's even on the it's either and now it's it's above the yellow line even further, so it's a little bit brighter again, and that's where you need to go with this. Okay, is this making sense? Oh yeah, Jason. So, so far, I'm, so I'm, good. I'm, I'm I'm talking to a computer screen. I'm not yeah. sure, I'm not quite yeah. sure my audience feedback. Yeah, it's not a it's not that much different from a flat panel. That's where I have most of my experience. You know, you it's really important in HDR on a flat panel to get this line to line up as best as you possibly can. And sometimes that's a combination of playing with the contrast and your picture mode. So you'll you'll find on a flat panel a combination of things that will help you get this to track well. But uh, regardless, you've got to do something. You can't leave it in its factory state. Yeah. So and 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 this gamma D is just too dim. So let's talk a little bit about how we, how to do the custom gammas. So if if you Google, you, there's a great AVS thread on it on um, on RV curves. And RV curves, you can you can load a program called Python. And and then start off with it with this with this with the where are we here supplements so I've loaded a program called Python and then you can grab you can grab different uh, options from that so in this option right here I, I'm you can go you can you can download these instructions too. So you, so you can read through the instructions and it tells you how to get how to get the uh, how to get the the, uh, the Python software and how to do it all. It, it's pretty step by step and there's lots of AVS form help to get you even further. Um, before I do this though, I want to say one other thing and I'm going to close out the software before I do that. Um, I'm always never sure whether the JVC is connecting correctly. I have the JVC connected with an Ethernet cable to my laptop. I'm creating my own network. So I, I, I like to I like to use the um, the JVC software 
and I'm just going to th go through a couple things on the JVC software for SDR and HDR. But I know if the JVC software is connecting, then then when I connect the uh, the Python and the R and the, the other tool, I know it'll also connect. So I'm using this to verify that things are connecting correctly. Greg, the instructions that you had up earlier on that Word document. Uh, was that something that was released official by JVC, or was that something that the, the community just figured out? That's something on on AVS forms. I think hey, Chris, if you're out there, who's uh, who's actually responsible for that? Uh, I, I know there's a there are there are about 20 diehards on AVS form that are really like they, they live and breathe this stuff. And sure. Chris would be able to give you the answer on that. RV, maybe maybe RV was the person. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe he's a roast beef burger. It's a mystery. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so so this is this is the uh, the the JVC software. Um, each generation of projector has its own model version of the software. Um, each each version of the software connects with different meters. If you want to do auto calibration, this particular version of the software only connects with the with the um, with the data color uh, data color five or six, I believe it is. So, but I, so I, so I have the software op up and running. I'm I'm opening the settings here. Then it says network setting. I just hit the check. And it says connection okay. So I I know my laptop is talking to the projector. Okay, and that's all I'm using this for. If I wanted to go ahead and do an SDR gamma adjustments, you could do that in here. You can collect your gamma preset. And then, then you can pull your gamma curves up and down at a, I think it's a 16 points or so. So you can do a full, you can do a full gamma adjustment with white, red, blue, and green to really get your grayscale and your gamma nailed at, at a really high level of, of accuracy. Do you that, find yourself that, that, that the that the user controls don't normally give you access to? Do you find yourself using that a lot for those for the JVCs? You can 19, 19 times out of 20, you can massage it without it. I, I'm yeah. finding that the longer these LCOS and SXRD projectors are, are run, the, 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 uh, the brighter the gammas get on them and, and the more you need to go to a tool like this. Yeah, I remember um, that when I did the SDR in mine, it was already pretty, pretty linear the, the way it was, so I didn't, I didn't need the, the extra help. Right, uh, and and it's in different markets too. I I I think JVC is probably doing something in the North American market and the European market that they're not doing to the Asian market. I don't know. Um, I, I've had to on, on some of the Asian projectors when when I'm te teaching classes like in Thailand or or, or, or uh, Taiwan, um, the gammas are are very S shaped and all kinds of weird things. That the only way you can correct them is with the software. Good to know. Good to know. And I, and I I think I. I, I think the U.S. guys are anal retentive and, and on video fidelity enough to to maybe fix this uh, when it yeah. when it when it gets off the ships. I okay, so we mic. have that. So we we know it's all connecting. I'm I'm just going to hit OK and then I'm going to hit the exit button. So so I, I know my laptop's connecting, so I don't have to worry about that when I go to the RV software. I find myself uh, using the Sony software on the Sony projectors quite a bit, um, just because man that. Uh, the two-point white balance that they give you in the Sony's just a lot of times just, I just need a I just need a few more adjustments for the mid-range. Yeah, exactly, and it's the same same idea. There's the Sony software is yep. um, the Sony software doesn't automate like the JVC does, right. but it gives you it gives you a, a, a higher level of control for yeah. better fine-tuning the gamma and the white balance. And it's, so, it's so the under the JVC software, I'm going to start um, JVC gamma. So in this software, I, I'm just following it. Um, I, I have to choose on the on the um, on the JVC. I, I have to get into the JVC. I'm on I'm on user mode two, which I've called HDR, and now my gamma is on custom one, and I'm using the import value. Okay. Perfect. So that's kind of my, that's kind of my preset. So right on here, if you, if you can see the laptop, I'm, my, yep. my 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 gamma table is is custom. So I'm going to choose eight. My maximum brightness now. So these are some, these are some settings that you get off the instructions, but I'm just going to put in my reference my uh, my re my reference white level is 100. Oh, that's backwards. I got to shut that down. Do it again. Oh, you have to exit out and start over if you if you yeah make a mistake. Oh, it popped right back up there. That's easy. Okay, so maximum brightness. We're going to say. Um, 
We're, we're, we're going to say uh, maximum brightness is is we, we, we're going to guess with this number. If we, if we want to have a if we have a smaller screen, it'll be a brighter. We, we, we would theoretically say it's a brighter number because we have you know less less square in, inches to light up. And then if we have a larger screen, it'd be a lower number. So I'm just I, I'm I, we can do several several readings in here. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to choose 900 for screen brightness right now. And this is this is so this is somewhat guessing, but you want to use a larger number for a a a a, a brighter screen and a, a lower number for a dimmer screen. Great. So the reference numbers? white. So the reference white is is 100 percent is is white. So at, at this point, when do we start? When do we when do we go from the ETUF to the point where we start to do some tone mapping? Okay, so the tone mapping is right around right around 65 70 percent. So if we have if we have if, we, if we're if we have if we're if we're playing with a 900 nit number, so let let's take let's take 70 percent of that. Okay, so when when do we start to roll off? So 70 percent of 900, so that would be 630, right? Sounds good. Okay, and then then we're going to hard clip at we'll say 4,000 nits, and then and then these these are some numbers you can play with them, but I just go clip and slope. We're gonna we're gonna be a slope of around three. We're gonna we're gonna soft clip at zero, and we're gonna and we're gonna clip gamma at one at the total one at one. Okay. And again, these these numbers are in the instructions, right? They're in the instructions, but th th these are kind of presets. The number, the number you want to be working with is this maximum bright brightness number. So, and and I'm going to show you some, some different examples of this. So, so we can use brightness of 900. Now, watch. I'm going to hit the plot button. Okay, so that is the gamma curve that the software is going to creating. Okay. So now it's going to hit low. Do you want to just ask in the question mark? I'm just going to type the yes button in. So you see now it's loading into user mode, picture two, gamma table custom. Boom, and that's done now. So you see under custom one now, it, 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 has, it has that import value. I'm just gonna jump back here again, just to make sure it's loaded in. Okay, so let's just, so let's just go ahead and leave this on the screen. And jump back to our software now. So let's go ahead and read this. So, so we 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 have changed our th this line. We have changed the, how the projector is is dealing with the ETUF line. Let's go ahead and just do some more measurements now and see how that works. See how it looks. It won't be any brighter. It won't the the the, the peak light output won't be any better. But is it going to be dimmer or It'll track brighter? better? Though. Okay. So yeah. you see now. So that's a little bit dimmer now. Right, it's it's below it's below the yellow target line. We've made the image a little bit dimmer. So let's go back to. So th this is where we are now, and let's find the RV tool now. So let's let's do the same thing again now. So let's so we're going to select the gamma gamma table of eight again, maximum brightest brightness. So we had 900, and 900 dropped it under the yellow line. So that's a little bit too dim. So I want to make it brighter. So I want to go to 800 or 700. Let's just, let's just try 700 just for giggles to see where we're at. Okay. Max from reference white again is 100. So the, so now the soft clip is going to be at 70% of 700. So that's going to be 70 of 700. So that's 490, right? Sounds good. I had to think about that. <laughs> okay. So the, and again the hard the hard clip is is the same values. It's it's going to be uh, 4,000 nits. And then we can, and we're going to use 0 0.30 and one. And then we're going to plot that again. So when you look here, you'll see that you'll you see a different plot now on the curve. Yep, a little see different. See the second one? It, it's it's it, it's 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 brighter than the first one. And then we can load this in now. Greg, do they explain in the instructions what those numbers mean, like the uh, the clip end slope and the soft clip method? Do they kind of teach teach you what those mean, or um, not not in the in, not not really in the in the instructions I have, but there you can you can go to the threads and you can read about them. You can you can play with some of the pivot points and stuff. Sure, cool, cool. Like here's one of the points right here. That's that's the soft 
point. Then you can play how quick does it arch up in here for tone mapping and stuff. And that's right. you can play with some of those points. Interesting. Okay. Cool. So, so now that is the second one. So now we can go back here now. So instead of 700, we've done 900. So now we can check, see the difference here again. You did 700 instead of 900. Yeah. So yeah, good. those 700 will be a, a brighter a brighter ETOF. And I'm just going to just jumping out of gammas here just to make sure make sure it loads in the new one. I didn't I, I should I should see it flickering but I didn't see I didn't see it flicker so not quite sure. Okay, so here we go again. So again, hope, so the white line will be a little bit higher than the yellow though this, this time. There it is, just a tiny bit, go. tiny bit lighter or brighter, rather. Yeah. So, so this is just like this is just kind of like an SDR calibration. This is your gamma. You want to get if this was gamma 2.4, you get on the gamma line. Yep. Then you're going to do a, a two-point white balance or multiple-point white balance if you have the controls on a flat panel, which you don't have. But um, so here, but, but so that's that's the little magic of um, of using the screen multiplier to try to get a fake number. So again, we're only shooting. It says we're measuring 537 nits, but we're really only shooting half of that. Yeah, you divide by two. Yeah. Taking every reading, reading and multiplying it by two, but that is giving us a pretty, you know, a couple points or maybe a little on on the low side, a little bit on the. And then we have then we have the roll off on the top end. Greg, if if you don't use that multiplier of two, um, is there just no way to get it? You, like you have to use that multiplier. It sounds like. Well, you have to. You so the multiplier. Is just tricking the software. Right. The multiplier is not doing anything to the projector. Absolutely. It, yep. It's just measuring. It's allowing you to measure, to actually measure like your delta E values for your white balance to say, is this reasonable? Right. Because otherwise, <laughs> it would track way low still, and the delta errors would be off the chart. Huge. And and it'll, and it'll even look worse when you're trying to do color management. Oh, way bad. Oh, yeah. Sure. Because sure. Because your luminance, because you, if your luminance is off in color management, you know everything's bad again. So, yep. so that's your basic. So at this point, then you just do a two-point white balance, which are pretty good here. I might, I might take down red, a, red a click or two, because we have a little bit of predominance of red, but it's not so bad. Um, yeah. So we could look, we can look at maybe 55, 50, uh, 55 percent stimulus there, or 60 percent, and do, and we we would take red down just. I'll do that. I'll go ahead and just take continuous measurements here. And then the temperature, probably get some tweaking, so we're just going to go under the gain. And I'm right in here. I'm just pulling right down a little bit more, which will pull it down in here. I can go 52. So you can see 50 is a little, red's a little bit high. Okay, and I can I could go ahead and do twenty and bias if I wanted to, you know, two point two point white balance. Right. So it's it's made a little bit red deficient on the top end, and it's still a little bit. Too much on the on the bright, dark end, but I mean we're we're still pretty reasonable here. Delta yeah, E's are you know really tight. Or 308, and, and as we go into end. roll off, that's when your delta E's go up, and there's nothing you can do about that because that's you know it's going away from the absolute values of the Sony X300. So there's you know as the luminance values increase, error the luminance errors increase with the E2F, the, the delta yeah. E's are going to go up. Greg, do you, do you ever, uh, sometimes I'll use this myself, I'll change the RGB balance graph to uh, show the error without luminance, and then at least you can see the red, green, and blue mix on a flat line. I do that sometimes too. Yeah. 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 So sometimes that's a little, it's just a little easier to read that way to, to some yeah, people. Yeah, good, good, good thought. I just pull out my magnifying glass and I look yeah. at it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so so that's, so that that is your basic, you know, calibration. You're not so much concerned about setting white point and black point on on most of these products because right. the the black and white levels are 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 
are, are inherent to the engineering, the mathematics of the product. Mm -hmm. So if you start to play with the black level or, or the white level, you're probably going to be mathematically the engineers are are are, are screaming in there on on their computer chips because the you know the, the levels aren't set correctly. Yeah. I, I remember at the very beginning of all of this with HDR um, uh, and, you know, everybody was still kind of trying to figure it all out. And one of the first things I heard was you don't touch brightness and contrast. And that is completely opposite of what we've always learned with panels is that you 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 adjust brightness and contrast. So, you know, it was a little bit of a learning curve, but, um, you know, we've basically got it figured out now, I feel like, for the most part, at least. Yeah, I mean, the JVC is like that I, on, on the Sony. Uh, you, you have to touch the contrast because as you as you bump the contrast up, it causes clipping, yes. but it causes more light output. So there, right. it's kind of a trade off on that one. Yeah, it's always uh, uh, less, lesser two evils. Sometimes you have to pick, unfortunately. But OK, so now so so we, so we have our I always talk about when I'm doing a calibration of the canvas and the paint. You always whenever you're doing a painting, you have to set up the canvas before you do the paint. The canvas right. is the luminance signal. And what we've done so far is set the luminance signal. We've set the gamma and we'll set the white balance. Now we can work with the paint which is the color management. Um, so we, we can see here on, on the CIE chart, we have Rec 2020, which is huge. None of these displays can get to Rec 2020. So what happens in mastering is you, you have the, 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 the Dolby Vision monitor, the Sony X300, they do DCI P3 as the color space. So the, the, they're, they're mastering in, in, the, in a DCI size triangle See if I can show it on this with the properties. No, I can't show it on this properties. Um, but they're they're they are they are shooting they they are manipulating colors that are in with the DCI spec, but they're they're outputting it in in a 2020 signal. So even though the signaling can go all the way out to these far edges, they're only working within the colors of the DCI color space. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yep. I uh, I see that. All the time, so, just like you do. Yep. So, um, so, so we're dealing with DCI colors within the 2020 space. The the other part of this is, just like an SDR, we, we, I was aiming at 75% stimulus because it, it might the, the the color correction might not go linearly or even all the way out to 709. Right. It's the same thing in uh, in in HDR calibration. It definitely doesn't go all the way out to 2020. Yeah, no and way. Lots of the time, lots of the times, it doesn't even get all the way out to DCI. So right. I recommend for DCI when we're doing HDR calibrations, don't shoot for even 75% of DCI, shoot for 50% of DCI. Yeah, and that's exactly. going to make sure that you're in the center part, which is which will be in the linear operating range of the display. I've seen a lot of displays, I'm sure you have too, where um, when you start pushing a color out, it might go linear, 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 and all of a sudden it curls up. And, it, yeah, and I'm going to show that as an example right you can now. Do. Oh, cool. So, Good. I'm going to choose the DCI P3 color space and I'm going to do 20% increments. So you'll see it'll go from 20, 40, 60, 80, all the way out to 100% of DCI. And again, that's 2020, which is none of these displays can get that far. Let's go ahead and do that. Greg, do you have a and prediction? Again, one of the nice things we're using, you know, one of the nice things with using the Klein is it's very, um, it's very fast, so oh, we can yeah. go ahead and do a lot of testing in here and have a lot of fun. Uh, do you have any kind of personal predictions on when we might see 2020 color with our eyes? Uh, uh, no, <laughs> I, don't. I know. I, I I'm kind of the same as you. That uh, last CES or the one before, there was one manufacturer that had a flat panel that was, I think, quantum dot driven that they claimed 97 percent, but um, that was just a claim and no measurement devices, so who knows what it was really doing. Yeah, I was at a CDA presentation two years ago. They were, they were saying it was doing Rec 20. A projector was doing 2020, no. but they had the lights on in the room. No, so, no, 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 no. no. Um, <laughs> so this is actually looking pretty good for DCI. That's great, yeah. Um, and, and But I've already done the color correction on that. So I'm just going to go ahead here. I'm, I'm going to choose 50% um, stimulus. Um, the one thing I found about this JVC in particular, when you're doing the color gamut in SDR, uh, the controls work really, really well. Uh, and what I've noticed on uh, HDR on tons and tons of panels is uh, if you start messing with the color management in HDR, uh, the, the controls are just either way too sensitive or they don't do anything at all. Uh, do you find on the JVCs that the CMS controls work pretty well in HDR? It, it does, but one of the problems you might be experiencing is you might be trying to 
you might be trying to target a point that's out, out, out of its linear range. Right. So, if, so if you're even doing 75% of DCI, you're, you're probably out of the projector's linear range. Sure, sure. So, so you definitely have to be, I mean, look at this right now. Now this is, um, uh, so on the JVC projectors, on the newer ones, they actually have, um, they, they have color spaces preloaded. On, on this model, you can actually get these color spaces and you can download them using the JVC software off the JVC website. And JVC gives end users instructions on how to do that. Oh, great. Um, so this one's actually preloaded for 2020. Um, and then and and then you can do 2020 no filter, and then you can do 709 no filter. So of course, you know when when the filter goes into place, it takes a, a 10 to 20 percent light output hit to put the filter in place. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a lot of light output, you really don't want to be using a filter on a projector. You I, I would I would be shooting I, I would keep it to uh, to more 709 color space and to have the high dynamic range versus having larger color space and less dynamic range. Sure, sure, good trade off. Yep. So, so 2020, we can hit on, and then, and, and then at that point, it's just do, it's just doing regular CMS adjustments. Sure, sure. Everything we've done for a few years now, several years now. Yep. And, but again, the, for HDR, target 50% values. Mm -hmm. uh, even 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 75% values are going to be too large on a lot of these um, a lot of the, on, on a lot of these products. It, it, you're going to be outside the linear range. And you're going to be cranking to get 100% on, and really throwing 25, 50, and 75 off substantially. When uh, when you had the sweeps up there before, 100% uh, green was doing a little bit of a curve out, but not bad. Everything else looked great. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can jump over here. Um, no, not on this one. Let's let's go. so let's just go here. So we can go. So that that's your basic calibration though on it. Let's go ahead and just and hit a quick capture just to see some results. And Greg, what do you what what would you say uh, is the big improvement visually on these projectors once you get the EOTF to track correctly? Is it is it more detail everywhere, mid tones, dark tones, and bright tones? What what do you think? Oh, it's it's everywhere. I mean, there's there's right. better uh, there's le less clipping of the image, so you're gonna see more, more 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 uh, more 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 higher part in the in the spectral highlights. Right. Um, you know, better better black detail. It's because you're gonna have better more light output in black, so right. black's gonna have less crushing. But but the first thing is you got to get the light output on it. So this generation and the next generation definitely use the RV curves to get more light output on into the projector because. Mm -hmm. Because okay, so what happens now is, if I if I got out of HDR and I go back into HDR, the gamma always is gonna is gonna reset to the gamma D. So every time you do that on this on this model of projector, only this year model, it was fixed the next year model. Um, but you, every time you, you 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 plug the HDR source in, you're gonna have to reselect custom gamma with the import. Got it. Yeah. Got it. So just once you do that, that you have to remember that, that's all. You set up for your movie, but you got to do that every time you do content on with this projector. Great, good to hear. It's going to be much much more pleasurable to look at. So I'm just going to go so that we saw the we saw the little little function of the evaluation. Should we we can do a color checker here? Let's just do this. I like Again, this test a lot. It's with the client, so it's pretty fast. So yeah. we're hitting all hitting all our white points for the ETF on target. I fell in love with this test the first time I ever saw it. I was like, oh, this is great, because now you're kind of really putting it through its ringer and sort of torture testing the panel, or, or the, in this case, the projector. Can you make these colors, yes or no? So so here, here's what it shows you. So you see here, though, all the delta E's are one, two, three, one, two, one, you know, nice and tight, yeah. nice and tight. And you see with, with red, green, and blue, right. red goes to four, green goes to eight. So what's going on here? This This is because... The, the software is telling it to do rec 2020 right and if you look on look on the CIE chart you're not getting close to rec 2020 so that's why you have an error of eight but if but if you stayed within the DCI space you'd be on you know you'd have a delta e of two right and again the same thing with cyan cyan is a delta e of looks like seven or eight mm -hmm. and it, just because it just if green doesn't go out that far cyan can't go cyan on, will. on yep. that line and it's funny too because if you draw a line from green down to blue, it goes right through that cyan dot, so they're at least lined up correctly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean it's nice. It's this linear performance this way. Right. Right. Exactly. 
So we can so we can look at sweeps. This is the DCI sweep. Let's go ahead and look at the 2020. I guess that'll be it right there. 20. This this is yeah. This is 2020. Yeah. Okay. So this is showing. So the, the, we're kind of set it up for DCI colors, but when it's trying to to do 2020 colors, this is what happens. And then bonk. Yep. And you see how it just kind of pigtails off. Yep. Yeah, you know, 75 is, and 100 are, are just pretty much touching it. Look, and on cyan, 75, uh, that, that's, uh, this is a uh, 60, 80, and 100 are right on top of each other. They the just, yeah. just can't go any further out that way. Yeah. And I see this but, too, especially measuring real big like that. I see this too on flat panels. I mean, this is, this is not anything out of the ordinary. Right. But again, this is all because none of these panels can do 2020. Right. But, we're not so concerned about that because all the reference content is use, is using DCI color space. They're, they're using the colors in DCI, but it's mm -hmm. being sent in a 2020 signal. So right. as long as we calibrate for the DCI colors within a 2020 signal, which is what we're doing for this, everything's going to be fine. Now that you change your targets, we should have a much more linear looking graph. And you see all the delta E's are less than uh, yeah. less than less than two. Mm -hmm. Greg, have you done uh, much experimenting yet with uh, using uh, DEITP for HDR? I have done some. I, I haven't done a huge amount. I mean, I have it in my class. I, I give you some yeah. definitions of it and and yeah. talking about lumen errors and and how perceptually we see spectral highlights differently in, in, in related to, to color errors. Totally, so I mean, yeah. that's definitely a thing, thing a, a way we're going. Sure, sure. Uh, in the, um, you know, but one of the things we deal a lot with, you know, we're, we're dealing with um, with with a lot of o o OLED product, and mm -hmm. in OLED we. Uh, it, in in the consumer world and even in even in the um even on the client monitors in post production they're w the w rgbs mm -hmm. so I, as you go past 300 nits it, it has to kick in the white uh, the the white pixel to create the light output so as you right. do that you saturate colors so as you mm -hmm. as you increase luminance colors there as you increase luminance v values of the colors in hdr in those panels you're all you're always increasing the uh, the color error Yep, and it's very, very, very obvious on those panels too. The the higher you crank up the OLED light, the more desaturated the colors start to look. It's very, very, very obvious on the OLED. Exactly, exactly. It's color volume. Oh, did I lose you there? Nope, we're here. We're good. Oh, okay. Well, I yep, so I'm good. just doing that. So the re report is just a general uh, Calman report. Mm-hmm. So, Greg, that was kind of really my first time seeing that, and it was nowhere near as uh, – I didn't think it would be bad by any means, but it was nowhere near as complicated as I thought it would be. No, well, the, the biggest thing is trying to create an ETOF that matches reference. Right. Um, and Knowing that you don't have reference on a projector. And that's the challenge here is you have to make it. You know, uh, on flat panels, you, you'll use a combination of picture mode and contrast control maybe, uh, on, on some of them at least, but – um, the, the, the big trick here is using that program and making the curve. Yeah. And so on, on the JVC, on the newer JVCs, you can just use the, um, you, 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 you can adjust the curve by using the, uh, the picture tone control. You don't mm -hmm. have to do an import, but you can, but you can choose, you can choose the, there's actually a, a setting on the newer JVCs. I think it's, it's called ETF or, or the HDR gamma preset but then yeah. you can turn the picture the, the picture tone control up to get it to better match the yellow line but you, you still have to use a um a screen multiplier on that great so Good. so th that is that is hdr projector calibration 101 yeah. There, is, <laughs> yeah there is a different layer to that called bt 2390 which takes mm -hmm. into account low luminance uh, display values um which is kind of a whole other class we could do at some point if you want to yeah. throw that out there in a couple of weeks we could actually do some hdr calibrations using bt2390 awesome awesome um well greg i'll uh, I'll, I'll turn to the audience now and uh, i'll see if there's any any questions uh, i haven't seen any new ones come in since i checked last uh, but if you guys have some questions this is a great time to go ahead and type those in and uh 
see if we can answer any questions for you. Um, as I'm waiting for those questions to come in, Greg, thank you so much. I hope uh, I hope at this point that RS 600 now is all really dialed in, so maybe you can watch a little bit of it this weekend. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a, I, I've got a few movies to catch up on myself. Um, I've heard that 1917 movie is amazing. I haven't had a chance to catch that one yet. Have you seen that? I, I saw that in uh, theatrically. It, I was uh, movie of the year. It, sh it should have won the Oscar, in my opinion. That's that's excellent. That's I've heard that from some other of my friends who I, I very much trust their movie opinions. That that's excellent. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else lately that I, you know, there's a new BBC one called uh, like Seven Continents or Seven Seven Wonders of the Planet or something. And I always really, really enjoy those BBC docs. Those are, they're always such high quality. Yeah, the HDR is always like, oh my God. Yeah, that's what I want. <laughs> Man, yeah, I remember, I think the first one I got, I think I want to say was probably Planet Earth 2. That was, a, that was a first HDR disc for a lot of folks. But since then, I've gotten Blue Planet 2 and Dynasties and, um, you know, a couple of the other ones I like a lot, too, if you haven't, if you haven't seen them yet. Uh, some of those, um, um, I, uh, some of the IMAX um, International Space Station clips uh, with, uh, with uh, I think Jennifer Lawrence narrates uh, the one disc. And it's, it's excellent. The, it's great. There's so much dynamic range there because in some shots you have the, the moon is really lit up. And, of, of course, against a very, very black background. So the. The, the contrast on some of those discs is just, ugh. I mean, I, Greg, you, you tell me how you feel about this. I, I find myself every five or six or seven years at this point saying to myself, like, how can it look any better? You know, going back to Panasonic and Pioneer Plasmas and going back even further than that. Um, you know, I, I keep saying this every few years. I, I wonder if you feel like that too. It's well, I mean, better the the, the ten bit. I think is a huge difference. More, yeah, higher sure. luminous values with less tone mapping is going to be is yep. going to be good. Yep. And and getting direct twenty twenty at some point. So I mean, yeah. we're all going in the right direction. Yeah. Well, that's uh, great. Um. Well, gosh, Greg, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I don't see any new questions rolling in. Uh, but uh, thank you for bringing that up, Greg, on your screen there. Uh, if you guys want to get a hold of Greg for for any questions or. Uh, information on on classes and things like that uh looks like it's a greg at professional video alliance.com uh, he's got that it up is, there on the screen that uh, is and uh, you've got uh greg you've got your uh did you want to show the folks your facebook page in case yep, anybody so wants to we have we have there? the facebook page you can like us on um professional video alliance on, on facebook oh, there um, it is. If, Great. If, if you if you go ahead and like this page when when we do the next uh the next webinar, which will be on, which this webinar I'll be doing will be the RS, uh, the, the RS 2000, uh, and I'll be doing an SDR calibration and an HDR calibration and BT 2390 on that projector. So like fun. us on Facebook, and you'll you'll be you'll be notified of the uh, of the next webinar for that. And then Greg, the other tab I think is your main uh, website, right? Yeah. So Professional Video Alliance, uh, we are worldwide right now. We have about 150 members. That's that have great. attended training that are certified professionals um, on, on on all different continents. Well, except uh, we're we're missing South Africa right now. We're missing yeah. the Antarctic. But um, <laughs> we've kind of we've been we've been cranking now for two years, putting people out there that actually um, you know care about image fidelity and and doing doing color calibration. And we're doing post production and performance home theater. So um, you know that that you can you can find a calibrator in your market off this website. Or you can look at where you might want to attend training classes or, uh, or become certified to be uh, the first calibrator in Algeria. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah. No, that, that's excellent, Greg. Uh, I, again, I don't see any other questions coming in, so I think the folks uh, maybe don't have any at this point, which is okay. And if you guys do have any questions uh, going forward, if you think of any tonight or something, feel free to uh, shoot Greg an email or uh, maybe visit the Facebook page or the website. Um, you can always reach out to me if you have any questions I can help you with. Uh, it's Jason at avproglobal.com. Uh, with that being said, Greg, uh, I don't have anything else for the for for the viewers. Do you have any final words, final thoughts? I think it's you know it, this is all fun stuff. Uh, go ahead and, and try some of the stuff if you if you haven't if you haven't gotten your foot wet in the HDR. Um, you know, good software, good tools make a difference, and practice your craft. You you, you got it. You got to sit down and you got to learn your skill set and burn that skill set into your memory. Excellent advice from a veteran calibrator and instructor, Greg. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, have yourself a great weekend and uh, we'll be in touch and we'll see how many more of these we can schedule depending on how long all this other stuff lasts. So 
Uh, thanks again, guys. Uh, again, have a great weekend. If we can help you in any way, shape, or form, feel free to reach out to us, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.